Welcome to Unlocking Your Truth, another podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. My name's Dr. Leslie and I will be your host for the next hour. Every week we start off with a discussion topic. So tonight's topic, it's a little bit of a different one. And maybe it won't sound spiritual to begin with, but it kind of is. Because... Um, it's it's really something that everybody deals with and can be a real um, block for people moving forward in their lives. So, Corey, what, what's the opposite of love? What do you think? Fear. Fear is the opposite of love. A lot of people think it's hate, but it's fear. Fear is the opposite of love because fear is the thing that will freeze you, that will get you completely stuck, unable to move. And love is complete acceptance, and you can't move forward without acceptance. Okay, so fear is the opposite of love. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about fear. And so if anyone listening has an irrational or rational fear that they would like some help with learning more about getting a a different perspective on it and some assistance in overcoming that fear. Tonight's the night for that. So, Corey, let me ask you, what's your biggest fear? (laughs) Whoa. He doesn't know. Uh, He's afraid to say. Fear. I think because I'm no longer in the quote-unquote workplace, a lot of my fear came from workplace and, and self-sufficiency. So I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess my biggest fear through life was, believe it or not, ending up on the street pushing a, a shopping cart. Okay, so f- what would that be? Fear of financial insecurity. Yeah, just f- fear of. I don't know what you'd call it. You yeah, know. fear fear of financial insecurity, I think, is what I would call it. Uh, what do you think my biggest fear is? Your biggest fear is non-acceptance. No, you know, well, maybe it's a version of that. Because my biggest fear, believe it or not, is loneliness. Yeah. <laughs> being yeah. alone, which an aspect of that is not being accepted, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and and, you know, I find that's actually the biggest fear in most of my students and people who come to me for mentoring because I tend to mentor and teach people who are who who have a an interest well more than an interest in spirituality a commitment to expanding their consciousness and still those kinds of people are a little bit on the edges and the outside of of mainstream society and so for them to be fully who they are uh, they're different and so there's a fear of of being alone being different having nobody else around that understands them that they can have a conversation with anyway that would be mine i i kind of match the people who come to see me on that it's my I really do think that fear is the biggest issue on this planet right now. Fear and greed, um, fear and greed are the two biggest issues on this planet. And I think that most people, whether they admit it or not, or whether they are conscious of it or not, are in some degree of fear about something. Probably most of the time. And I think you hit the nail on the head, especially in the workplace, especially in stressful situations in the workplace, right? Because there's a fear of not being good enough, a fear of not getting it right or doing it right, a fear of the boss's wrath and the boss's judgment, a fear of being found out, a fear of being caught arriving late or whatever it is. Um, Fear runs through everything and of course 
We've got these things that we, there are irrational fears and rational fears. There are things that maybe it makes sense. I mean, if you are a caveman standing in front of a saber tooth tiger and you are feeling afraid, kind of, that's a rational fear, isn't it? That kind of makes sense. Yeah, except I don't think those two existed at the same time. Well, I, I just, <laughs> you know. I'm just kidding, just kidding. Just an illustration, I think they did. But if you have a fear, I don't know, of pink blamonges being dropped on your head. <laughs> I just made that up, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's irrational, isn't it? Well, you know, and that's not so crazy because there are... I was looking before we went on air. There's a, a dictionary online which gives you a list of all the different fears. And there are some very interesting ones. And, for example, fear of clowns is a genuine fear. Fear of clowns is called cholrophobia. I had a fear of parades for a while. You. Well, I, I don't know if you want to call it a fear of parades, but when I was a kid, I, I lived in the east side of Montreal, and every and I don't even know what parade it was. And I just we just moved to Montreal from I was about three or four years old, and just moved to Montreal from from Holland. So I was just a little over three or four years old. I used to go to this little store. It's very independent at that age, believe it or not. At four years old, I used to walk down. The street was the same block, the block, and. Uh, there was a parade, and I couldn't get back across the street, sort of. I, I, saw, I saw a marching band coming, and since then, it just parades sort of like... You know. mm, interesting. You know, there's, a, there's something called dromophobia, which is a fear of crossing the street. Mm. You reminded me of when I was a kid. I watched Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. It's probably aging me there. But... Um, the child catcher in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Mm. I was afraid of the of being taken away by the child catcher after that. <laughs> well, you know, it's no wonder we live in fear, right? I mean, when when most parents, uh, most parents from the, the first th when you come home, of course, they put you in jail, you know, behind the bars of your playpen or your crib, and you're in jail, but. It's it's the you know the first real thing you do on your own or independence is start to walk, and of course you start to walk, and when you start to stumble a little bit, your parents go, "Oh, be careful, be careful! You're going to fall and hurt yourself." And so even I'm surprised that any of us even get to walk because <laughs> in true, that nature, it? you know. It's yeah, just, it's true. We for most people, I think, yeah, uh, the. It, it starts with the parents and how the parents uh, teach you about the world. And they do teach you to be... They, they do instill fear as a way of protecting you, don't they? Don't In, touch, different don't, ways. Yeah, yeah, don't touch the stove. Don't yeah. do this. Don't do that. Don't get into any fights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well... Anyway, just um, for a bit of fun, and we're going to talk in a minute about, well, if you're in fear, if you're in fear and if you're afraid of something, what's, what's your way out of it? Because well, like I said before, fear keeps you stuck. I mean, it's that, just get that image of uh, a deer in the headlights or a rabbit in the headlights frozen with fear. They can't, they don't move a muscle, you know, and... It's the same for, for us. When we're in an enormous amount of fear, it's hard to make a move forward out of that. Yeah. Well, what you were talking about, you know, the, the caveman and the saber-toothed tiger, and what was the other thing? <laughs> the falling... A uh, pink lemonge. The pink lemonge. <laughs> the, the falling pink lemonge. It's actually, those two are... are actually the exact same fears in in essence because if you're standing in front of the saber tooth and he hasn't attacked you yet your the fear is of what's going to happen and it's the same thing with the falling lemonges is the fear of what's going to happen when the falling lemonges hit me mm. <laughs> you're you're right and actually that's a really good point and that actually segues me into talking about the way out of fear and um 
stops me having the fun I was going to have. Well, have, have the fun you're going to have. <laughs> have the fun you're going to have anyway. <laughs> All right, because I was going to do a guessing game with you. Okay, go um, ahead. To see if you could guess what these different we fears did this are. Once. I know, but not with fears, <laughs> with fortune telling or something oh, like okay. that. So, what do you think anoptophobia is? Oh. Anoptophobia. Spill that. No. No. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's, uh, did you say it's fear of being spitted no, at? No, I said spell that. Oh. <laughs> okay. A N U P T. A phobia. Um, fear of getting married. Fear of staying single. Oh, okay. Which Opposite. actually I think is a big one. I think that's a big one. I was close. Yeah, you were close. I think that's a really big one. And here's another one which we we could have used earlier in our conversation. Ergophobia. Fear of standing in front of saber tooth tigers? No. no. <laughs> Ergophobia Ergophobias? Yeah, ergo. E R G O. <laughs> Don't know. Fear of work. Oh, okay. Fear of work. Oh, yeah, erg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, see, another common one. Um, what about... Me- uh, I don't know if I could pronounce this, but I'll give it a shot. Metathesophobia. Metathesophobia. The fear of... Religious tenets? No, that is the fear of change. Okay. So those three, I think, are really big up there on the list of fears. That people, you know, it's not like, you know, if somebody has an irrational fear of spiders or an irrational fear of, uh, you know, the water and drowning, um, you know, we hear about those stories, but, but really these, those three, I think, are quite common amongst people. But you brought up an interesting point when you said um, religious tenets, because when I was just scanning through this list, of course, there's a word for a fear of, you know, um, this type of religion, that type of religion, this type of culture, this ty- that type of culture, you know, whether it's a fear of people who are Jewish or it's a fear of people who are, you know, Hindus or it's a or it's a fear of a particular country, like a fear of a Japanese person or a fear of a an English person. Anglophobia was a fear of an English person. <laughs> Japanophobia was a fear you know really? I mean yeah, and it's kinda interesting. So I mean and really when I think of all those things, it's fear of the unknown. It's fear of people are afraid of what they don't know about. They're afraid of what's gonna happen next and they're afraid of what they don't know about. Something that's foreign, unusual, different. They're afraid of what's different to them. Okay, I've got one more. and You're not going to thank me for this one. <laughs> I, there were some very funny ones, actually, that they were a bit rude, and I, so I thought I'd better not choose those. Oh, but, yeah, I, I had one. It was the longest word. It was a huge, long word. I forgot what it was, though. What about this one? Peladophobia. Peladophobia. Fear of bicycling? No. Peladophobia. Peladophobia. Fear of flowers? No. <laughs> fear of talking? No, but that is one. That fear of talk. There's lots of one. Glossophobia is a fear of speaking in public. And um, there was a, a, another one as well. No, this is a, a fear of... Fear of bald people. <laughs> 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 yeah, fear of fear of bald. Oh, here's another funny one. No, I got to say this one too because it's Poor kind of strange. Consecotaliophobia. Consecotaliophobia. Consecotalia. 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 Can you spell that for me, please? C o n s e c o t a l e. A phobia. Fear of consequences? No. <laughs> Consequotomia. I'll tell you, because you'll never get it. Fear of chopsticks. Fear of chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, the, the, I, have, I have a list of them on my website, and uh, 
I, I, I swear, somebody sits up at night just thinking up all these things. I furs. know. I mean, really, it is a bit silly, isn't it, you know, to, to have to have a separate word for all these different fears um, that nobody even knows any of them or uses them. <laughs> well, I'm sure if somebody, I'm sure if somebody's said them, somebody's had them. You know. Yeah, they're probably there for psychiatrists to write scientific papers when they get a patient that's got it or something. <laughs> <you know. laughs> Okay, um, it looks like I need to take a quick break. When we come back after the break, uh, we'll talk about, well, what's the way out of fear? You know, if you have some kind of rational or irrational fear, what's your way out of it? Welcome back to Unlocking Your Truth with Dr. Leslie. I'm Dr. Leslie, and we have been talking about fear. Fear, and how fear is the opposite of love, and how it keeps you stuck. And we've been talking about both rational and irrational fears. And so if you have, if you're afraid of something, anything, feeling anxious, (laughs) phone us up and have a talk might make you feel better and I said before the break that we would talk after the break about well so and what's the way out of fear and we got to remember the 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 term fear itself is an anagram for, uh, not an anagram an acronym of fear is uh, false evidence appearing real yeah I've heard we, that before yeah and it's 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 I, I think it's so true uh, uh, I'll relate one quick experience I had that was quite interesting. I have a, I, I do have one of those. I need to succeed at everything, and I hate do it. You know, I'm a bit of a perfectionist or an imperfectionist, depending on how you look at it. Remember once at work on a Friday, and uh, my boss comes up to me and turns and says, uh, "Monday morning we need to have a meeting first thing, eight o'clock." And I said. What about you? Just just be there. Eight o'clock. We're having a meeting. And so all weekend I was going, what? What? What's going on? What's wrong? What happened? What I do? What's wrong? And I go in. I get there quarter to eight and I'm sitting and waiting and and eight o'clock comes and I don't see my boss. Eight thirty, eight thirty, nine o'clock. Then my boss strolls in and Oh, hi, how's it going? Good, good. Uh, we're having our meeting. Our meeting? Yeah, we're supposed to have a meeting at 8 o'clock. Oh, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but yet the whole weekend I was stressed out. Yeah, you thought you were going to get fired or, or, or railed something. over yeah, for the hot coals like that, for yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. So false evidence appearing real, it's it's so true. And this is maybe one one time where you might advocate the logical mind because really, if you take that premise, false evidence appearing, appearing real and just be very analytical and logical about things. Um, but, th- you know, anyway, that wasn't what I was going to say is the way out of fear. The way out of fear, and we've already hinted at it because we were saying that, you know, the, the, the two things that people are afraid of, one of them is the future, the future and the unknown. So... If you're afraid, you know, being afraid of the future is a really real thing. So what is the way out of fear when it's caused by the fear of something that might happen? Be in present time. It's as simple as that. Be in present time. I say a lot on this show, you know, you, you are not your physical body. And... Your physical body can only be in present time. It can only be right here, right now. It can't go into the future. It can't go into the past. It can only be in present time. It's you, your consciousness, that goes traveling around into the past or into the future. And so, you know, if if you're afraid in that situation of the... I don't know, the saber-toothed tiger is probably not the best example, but you're, af- you're afraid. Say you've got a, a, a fear of ladders, walking under ladders, and every time you see a ladder, you go into a state of fear. Well, 
You haven't even walked under the ladder. Nothing's happened yet, right? It's a fear of something that might happen in the future. And so bring your consciousness out of that projection that is saying, if I walk under that ladder, I will, you know, have bad luck. Or, oh, look, there's a pink blancmange. What if it's going to fall on my on my head? Bring yourself into present time because in present time, those things haven't happened. It doesn't exist. It only exists as a thought form. It's just a thought. It's just a projection of thought that you are making. And, of course, we know that energy follows thought. So the more that you focus on that thought, probably the more likely you make you make um, it as, as a potential thing that might happen. So, so learning how to be it really in the present moment is a fantastic way to move out of fear. And, and, and if you could just, there are mindfulness techniques that you can use for this. I mean, you just really focus on your breathing and just anything that makes you focus on your physical body, whether it's listening to the sounds around you, focusing on your breath, anything, any of the smells or, or you know, touching things in the room bring you into the present moment. How about grounding? Yeah, that was going to be the next thing I talked about after present time. But, uh, I mean, present time really is the key to this because if you're completely in the moment and you really recognize that all there is is right here, right now. There's no fear. There is no fear. You know, even if you're... Tomorrow you have to go to bankruptcy court or you're going for an operation on your heart, or you're going to have it out with your boyfriend because you think he's having an affair, (laughs) right? If you just pull your energy and your consciousness into present time, well, all that there is, all that exists is me, sitting here quite safe in my home, you know, in my office, wherever you are, you know, drinking a cup of tea with no signs of danger or anything, uh, you know. So so present time is the answer to getting out of fear. And, of course, the other techniques that I'm always talking about on this show can help bring you into present time. Because if you focus on grounding, what you're doing is you're creating a flow of energy from near the base of your spine to the center of the earth. You're connecting yourself to the planet, which is... You're connecting yourself to this point in the space-time continuum that you are in, where the things that you are afraid of are are not happening now. And the other technique I talk about a lot on the show is centering. And if you if you've never heard of grounding or centering, then go back to the podcasts on CIVL and listen to a few of the past shows because they're they're bound to come up because I talk about them a lot. But what centering will do is it will help you deal with your body's intense emotions, and it will help you be in charge from a spiritual perspective rather than from a body perspective because it helps you to be neutral and it also helps you to see very clearly, right? So it helps you see very clearly what's real and that will also give you a different perspective on your fear. some questions that came in this week and one is from sally and sally and, and you know callers when uh or listeners when you listen to the questions listen if you can hear the fear that that this comes from because most questions come from fear so how do you see my career changing if you see any changes okay i'll take a look at that and um I'll take a look at that question for Sally. So give me a moment. And um, if you're listening for the first time, I'll just explain that 
what I do here is I go into a very light self-induced trance so that I'm able to tune out the physical world and tune into people on a spiritual level. It's like a kind of soul-to-soul communication as opposed to a physical communication. So this lady's wanting to know about her career change. Well, it's kind of interesting, actually. Very interesting. I'm I'm seeing that... I'm seeing there's something that is kind of quite forceful, wanting to take her in another direction. And on the one hand, it feels like it's wanting to take her in a backward direction. So let me just take a, a, a look at what that it, what that um, what that forceful thing is. Yeah. So um, career change for Sally. Well, I think like a lot of people, you've got this thing going on, which is. Um, what you want to do versus what you ought to do. What you love versus what you think you have to do in order to pay the bills. And and so it looks like you you know what you love, but you're looking for some permission to do it because it w- and you don't feel like the, the permission is there to do it because it's something different than what everyone around you might believe is a reasonable uh, career for you. And so that's what I'm seeing you dealing with. I'm seeing that you you do know what you want to do and you do know what direction you want to head in, but the, the fear is of stepping outside of the box. The fear is of stepping outside of the norm. The fear is of judgment of other people. What will other people think if I do this? And so you're kind of battling with yourself. There's like the ego self battling with the spiritual self. And, um, yeah. And that, that's really what I'm seeing for you, Sally. Do we have another question? Yes, we do. And this question is from T- uh, Tanya. Has my relationship with my significant other come to an end? Okay, let's take a look at that. Relationship with the significant other and has it come to an end? So I'm just tuning into your energy right now. Here's the answer. (laughs) The answer is, well, in present time, no. But part of the reason is that the two of you are really hooked into one another um, and I'm just seeing the energy as one of attack <laughs> and um, you know and an anger and I'm seeing you know that one person actually looks like him is, is sort of like almost wanting to throttle you <laughs> so it, it looks like it's very um I don't know what the word is, but it, it you know, when relationships go, go out of kilter and, 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 and people are arguing, it looks like you're really, I can see why you're asking the question, because um, it looks like you're, 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 you know, you're faced with both of you being angry. And, you know, I'm seeing that his, when he, his way of being when he's angry is for his energy to go out of his space and for him to want to shut you up and shut you down and that makes you angry because you want to be heard and so you've got two impulses that are not correlating and so it really it looks like you've got yourself into a stalemate um and both parties are feeling hurt and angry and out of the two of you your energy looks more stable you know it looks like you're kind of what you're doing is standing your ground in spite of the um, energy that's being thrown at you 
and I'm seeing that the reason that he is throwing his energy and his anger at you is because he is in pain. And it has actually nothing to do with you, but he's not able, when the pain is lit up, to realize that. You know, he sort of needs someone to blame, and you're the nearest target. So that's what I'm I'm seeing in the dynamic of the relationship. And, you know, to say, is it over yet? Well, of course, I wouldn't tell you what your choice should be because it's your choice and you have free will. So right now, the two of you are engaged in not a very pleasant manner. Um, and, and while that is going on, the... Uh, uh, th on an energetic level, you're still hooked into each other, maybe in the not, not the most pleasant way. And you have a choice. You have a choice to ride the storm and see if it changes or not. Um, is this a man who is prepared to deal with his pain and take responsibility for it? Mostly not, but maybe there's a glimmer of that so you know I'm not sure really whether that is or is not what you wanted to hear because I'm throwing the responsibility back at you and I'm sure you know that you're in that kind of dramatic state at the moment but um, you know but there it is I you know you it, you know it might be an interesting experiment to find a way of breaking that a current stalemate um, and see if that makes a shift. That, so that's what I have for Tanya. Okay, thank you, Dr. Leslie. Another question. This question comes from Kristen. And Kristen wants to know, will my husband and I be financially ready or secure to buy our dream house within the next six months? Mm. A future time question. <laughs> so so I don't answer future time questions. I answer them, but I just don't answer them in the way that people expect. So people... You know, a lot of people go to see someone that they label, that you know, you label as a psychic because they, you want your future told for you. And the future doesn't exist. We just talked about that earlier in the show. The future doesn't exist. All it is is a thought form, a projection of thought. All that exists is for you is right here, right now. And But you create your future through your thoughts and through your beliefs. But basically, your life is a string of present moments happening one after the other, and each moment you are cr you are the creator of it. So, if I was to predict, if you will um, be financially secure enough to make your dream house come true in the next six months, really all I would be doing is tuning into a field of probabilities, and um, you know, taking my best guess at um, what the current energy would lead to be created at that time but meanwhile you can change it at any point so having said that i'll take a look at your energy and give you some more information okay so Kristen and her husband wanting to create their dream home and so like i said you create your reality through your thoughts and your beliefs. And, and of course, the more you are a vibrationary match for what it is that you are wanting to create, then the faster that thing will manifest. And I'm seeing that your husband is, his energy field looks, he's got this lovely... Sky blue vibration is the main vibration that I'm tuning into. And it's sort of like wide open like the sky. You know, he it looks like he's positive. It looks like he um Yeah, he's he's not setting any limits on on what the possibilities could be. You on the other hand the way I see you is sort of like it's almost like clinging on to him a little bit 
and sort of almost expecting him to do it for you. And so I'm seeing there's some more anxiousness within you and some more desperation within you. And and that's really what you want to work on, Kirsten, is it looks like he's fine, but it looks it'll be good for you to just pull your energy back off him and um, deal with your own anxiety and fears and limits that you're holding within your space. Because while you have them there, that's the vibration that you're putting out, and it will impact this co-creation that you and your husband are trying to make together. So let me just see if I can give you some more information about... um, Well, it it looks like you do have some beliefs that say, I can't do it on my own. I have to be with someone who's stronger or wealthier than I am, um, more capable than I am, so that they can do it for me because I can't do it on my own. And, um, you know, and I'm not good enough and I'm unworthy. So it looks like you're dealing with some core issues of self-worth and... um, And also of not taking responsibility for yourself and your own reality. Sort of handing over your power to other people because you don't feel like you're capable yourself. So if you really want to create this dream house, the good news is you can do it, but the way to do it is by taking responsibility for yourself and for your energy and healing yourself. everybody welcome back to unlocking your truth with dr leslie we've been talking about fear this evening rational irrational fear that freezes and stops you moving forward and we're taking your calls right now so 604-504-7441 extension 4142 is the number and of course you can email info at drlesliephillips.com as well do we have another question, Corey? Yes, we do. And this question is from Kelly. And Kelly would like to know, and she says, Hello, what direction should I take in terms of my career vocation? And Kelly is a lady. Career direction and vocation. Well, let's take a look at you, Kelly the lady. <laughs> Give me a moment. Why tune into your energy? So, well, you're a great one to teach how to ground, actually, Kelly, because I'm seeing you're not very grounded, and that's why, that's why you don't have any certainty about where you want to go. So that's the first thing, is... um, Listen to some back copies of the show on civl.ca on the podcast page. Uh, learn how to ground, or you can go to drlesliephillips.com, and if you um, join as a free subscriber, you get um, a free grounding meditation and a free uh, centering meditation. So that's another option for you. So that's the first thing. Because what I'm seeing is all of those plans that you have for yourself and for this lifetime, they're not being grounded into physical reality they're they're like dreams you know ideas but not being made real because they're not being grounded in and through your body so that's the first thing i want to say and and then if i tune in to and i'm giving you a little healing actually and helping you bring some of that into your body while i'm looking at you um I would say, give me a moment, because there's, there's the, I'm tuning into a, a vibration and I'm trying to figure out exactly what the, this, uh, there's one of two different things that I'm looking at here. I really 
Part of me wants to say that it might have something to do with healing in some way. Um, you know, so if you if you're interested in anything like nursing or medicine. Well, um, those those are things that are coming up as possibilities, and there's some. Um, and you know, I don't know anything about you, and so, but to me, it looks like more like nursing or an orderly or something like that, working in a hospital, in in in. In, in that kind of a vocation and I just want to see if there's any more to say if there's any other options that are coming up well it looks like you do have you definitely do have um, a gift in terms of being a healer of some kind and, of course, that doesn't always have to look like being a doctor or being some great miracle healer that's on the television. I mean, so many people in our world are healers, just doing all, you know, th whatever job that they're doing. But that's the direction that I'm seeing for you. So, Corey, I think we've got time for just one more question. Okay. This is a question from uh, from Jen, I'm sorry, from Jen, from Jennifer. And Jen wants to know, Dr. Lester, just wondering what the rest of the year has in store for me. I feel quite stuck at the moment, not moving forward or backwards. So just wondering what's in store for me. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jen. So hopefully you heard me answer the other question where I said I, I won't do a future time prediction. But... I am glad to get your question because, of course, you said, well, I'm stuck. And that's what we've been talking about all evening is being stuck and what gets us to be stuck. And the answer about what gets us to be stuck is fear and being afraid. So I'm going to tune into you and look at your energy and see if we can get some information about whether that's true for you. And if so, what is it that you're afraid of? So give me a moment. Well, I do think that it's true for you now that I look at you. You do look stuck. <laughs> and um, part of it is actually for you, not in a way more than being afraid of moving forward, I'm seeing that you're sort of stuck in the past or things that have happened in the past are keeping you stuck and preventing you moving forward. So you've got this sort of big block made of past time energy that is it's giving you some beliefs to operate from and it's giving you some just some reference points that you it looks like your mind just keeps going back to. So the answer for you is actually the same answer for getting out of fear, is being in present time and letting go of the past. Letting go of the past. Because uh, it just looks like you've... Um, the analogy I always just like to use when talking about this is to sort of say, well, you know, you're a lady, you like to buy clothes. Um <laughs> If you just kept buying more and more clothes and you kept shoving them in your wardrobe, pretty soon you wouldn't be able to even see what you had in there or know what matched with what. And so you kind of need to let go of last season's outfit and the season before, you know, and those pants that you had from when you were 18 that you think you might get into again. Because, because in that way you make space 
to be creative and to move forward and try on a different outfit. And, and so that's the analogy I'd use for you is just clear out the past. It looks like some, for some reason you're stuck in the past and that's preventing you from moving forward. I'll give you a little healing um, very, very quickly because we're near the end of the show. And just in case there's anything else that comes up. Um, looks like one of the things that you're afraid of has to do with another person and maybe there's something to do with being afraid of um, either letting another person go or moving forward without without them in some way and so um, so but you know take the information about how being in present time that we were talking about earlier on the show and and also the information about grounding. Like I said, you can subscribe to drlesliephillips.com or you can go and do some of the CIVL podcasts. Thank you for joining us. You've been listening to another Unlocking Your Truth podcast by Dr. Leslie Phillips. For more information, go to her website at drleslie.com. P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S dot com. That's drlesliephillips dot com, where you can ask questions or send her an email. And there's many free gifts on there for you as well. Come back again.